Netflix, you don't need cable. Hop on YouTube, come to the hood table. Where we chop up local and global events vocally. You don't really want to miss out on these conversations. Just joke a little, laugh a little. Get that wine in your system for your glass a little. It's current events talk, trash a little. You never know these opinions might clash a little. Get addicted to the content, got them binge watching. You don't like it, then you want invited. Bet your friends watching in the house and your job parking lot before you clock in. Want to miss a second of this HT content. Everybody think they got something to say So it's an open invitation, bring it to the table But if you come whack, just know we ain't buying in We gon' probably turn your back until you start try again Yeah, welcome to the hood table You don't need Netflix, you don't need cable Yeah, welcome to the hood table You don't need Netflix, you don't need cable Hey! Hey y'all, guess what? It's my birthday. It's my birthday. We're gonna party like it's my birthday tonight at eight o'clock. <laughs> but thank you everybody for tuning in today. We are going to be discussing Ruthless. And we are now on season one, episode 19, and it was titled The Purge. So make sure you guys on your way in, make sure you hit the like button, share the video, subscribe to the hood table if you're not already subscribed. And also make sure you hit us up on IG, Facebook, Twitter. Um, also, uh, look at these bangs, Sal. These bangs, child. Um, IG, Facebook, Twitter, Stereo, and also uh, thehoodtable.com, which is our uh, website. And again, today is my birthday, so wish your girl a happy birthday. And also, if you feel like you want to, you know, give a little, little something to your girl's birthday, cash app, the hood table 402. I sure will appreciate it. <laughs> But anyway, anyway, let me hurry up and get through with this because I do have to make a run and get some little decorations and get me a bottle, you know, all that kind of stuff. We had a snowstorm this morning, so huh, the streets out there is a little cray cray right now. But I got an SUV, four wheel drive, so hopefully my um my truck uh will make it through the snow. So on that note, everybody, let's jump right into this review. Um, again, it's Ruthless Season 1, Episode 19, The Purge. Now, at the end of last episode, we saw how Melinda had drugged Deputy Pope so that she could try to find some evidence on what the authorities might have on their cult. At the beginning of this episode, she woke him up. He had absolutely no idea what had happened. She was laying right on as if he just fell asleep while they were having sex, and that's exactly what she told him too. And he believed her, but he tried to uh get her to do it again, and she, he was she was like, no, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know, the the thrill is gone. The thrill is gone, child. <laughs> and then also the highest, he had Daikon bring Andrew punishment trailer. Now Andrew, he was being grilled. Because y'all know he had went back home to see his wife without their permission. He was supposed to go to the grocery store. Despite him going home to try to prevent his wife, you know, from reaching out to him at the cold again, he was willing to face his punishment. Or was he really? Because after his long, drawn out apology speech, declaring his love for the highest and for his new life that he has built within the community. It seemed to me like he was trying to escape the punishment. So I think he was trying to do a little, you know, mind reversal or something like that. But anywho, the highest asked him, does he still love his wife? To which he says, yes. But because of the affair with Malcolm, he no longer wants to be with her. The highest is, well, as far as punishment, it's going to hurt more than it's going to hurt me. And my mind quickly went to something else. You know, I got to thinking about William. You know, he's been going through. But anyway, anyway, he wants him to murder his wife. He wants to remove her from the face of the her. Her and her demonic, cheating, affair-having, adulterous spirit should be removed from the face of the earth. He ordered him to kill his wife, y'all. And he has 24 hours to pull it off. If he doesn't pull it off, then he's not going to be allowed back into the compound. So I guess we're finally going to find out if Andrew has really been compromised or is this request 
from the high is just a test of Andrew's loyalty. Will he get there to murder his wife and then somebody stops him and just be like, oh, it was all a test. It was just all a test. But Andrew, you know, he agreed to the terms so long as the highest allows him to stay. I, my, you know, myself, I'm not sure if Andrew truly believed that the highest was serious, but Daikon did confirm it. Um, the next time Andrew tried to leave the compound, he said the highest will not only go after your wife, but it will come after your child. Then again, though, is that kid really his? Is that child really Andrew's or is that Malcolm's child? Like mama's baby, papa's baby. I don't know who child that is. <laughs> y'all let me know who y'all think that baby belongs to. <laughs> But um, anyway, in other news, in other news, on their way to put the groceries up, Ruth and Tally, they spotted Daikon, you know, es escorting Andrew to the car. Noticing the duffel bags Andrew was carrying, Tally asked Elder Mother, where is he going? Man, I was like, Tally, why you do that? Why you just can't keep your mouth shut? When Tally asked her that question, Elder Mother tried to slap all the teeth out of Tally's mouth. All her teeth, I know half of them had to be on the half of them had to be on the floor and not in her grill. <laughs> I was like, Tally girl, you keep getting out of line. She'll soon be unrecognizable. I'm telling y'all, the girl still got scars. She still got ring around the eyes, black eyes, bruises all over her face. And then she just got the taste slapped out of her by elder mother. I'm like, child, the child still ain't even healed from all the beatings she got a week ago or a couple of weeks back when she was in the punishment trailer all that time. Po tally, po tally. Whew. But anywho, um, seeing how much stricter uh, is getting and in fear of the highest, you know, eventually making them all drink the Kool-Aid, Tally and Ruth comes up with an idea. Together, they decided to replace the potassium cyanide with salt, since it looks much like salt. But on the way to their trailer, Tally was having doubts that Ruth was still down to escape. Tally wanted Ruth to go see Daikon to find out why Andrew was being sent off, you know, with some duffel bags. She's like, and she, he's my lifeline. He's the only one I have here. As if Ruth wasn't being there for her this whole time. But anywho, anywho, she wanted her to go visit Daikon. And you know what that means by visit Daikon. You already know what that means. But Ruth didn't want to visit Daikon that night. Ruth only visits Daikon when she feels like it. She only sleeps with Daikon when she feels like it. It's all on her terms, not when Tally wants her to go to that man's uh, trailer or to the Punisher trailer. And I, for one, was actually surprised to hear Ruth say that Daikon's peace. Did y'all hear her talk about his manhood? First she talking about it ain't as good as, you know, maybe she would have thought, you know, she talking about he looked like a bird and so does his manhood. But then talking about it be tickling her because it has a curve in it. <laughs> it wraps around. It wraps around the walls. I was like, child, I don't know what kind of curve you riding on, child. But I done rolled on a few curves before. And child, I would have been in that trailer every night. She was like, oh, you need something to eat? You need your hair rub? You need your house clean? You need the dishes washed? You need? Mm -mm. What you need, sir? What you need, sir? Elder Roof is here to provide. I'm here at your service. <laughs> And Ruth claims that she be faking it when she be having sex with him, all in an attempt to just steal the keys. Again, I find that too hard to believe. <laughs> I'm like, is she pulling Tally's leg? She got to be. She talking about it be tickling her. Mm -hmm. I be like, tickle me, Elmo. <laughs> no. <laughs> but not only Tally was being insubordinate, y'all. Ruth called Zane outside with Oliver. Oliver was just trying to find out how Paula was doing. Um, you know, regardless of his intentions, though, 
Ruth proceeded to lay it into both of them, into the both of them. Because if mother sees them two together outside late at night like that, huddled together in the corner, the ladies in their trailer would be the one to get punished. Not Oliver, but I guess Oliver was like, you know, well, hell, y'all put me at risk. Y'all sent me to steal the charcoal. I could have got caught stealing the charcoal from the kitchen. I could have got caught getting that charcoal collar. So I just want to know how she do why wouldn't he want to find out how she's doing i don't know ruth was like you can find out in the morning y'all in the morning <laughs> but oliver and that other guard man after getting chewed out by ruth oliver found out that andrew was sent out on an assignment for leaving without permission oliver also finds out the recruiting process. He learned how some of the recruiters go to the bus stations and the high schools looking for girls who wants to make some money. Basically, they are looking for children who might be homeless, abandoned, or just out there looking, you know, for a quick way to turn a trick or a dollar, you know, do anything for a dollar. As for that part, though, the recruiters sometimes even test the girls out to see how much they are really willing to do for something in exchange. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, Oliver, he seems to be looking forward to recruiting, but not so much at being enlightened by the highest. That's mainly due to the fact that the men, they're, they're not supposed to, or they're not, they aren't supposed to, you know, uh, discuss what happens during the enlightenment, aka the cleansing process. The only thing that the guard could tell him um, is that, Oliver, you will enjoy it. And you will be so much more in love with the highest and his message. I was like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that ain't what William's saying. But maybe, maybe with some people, the highest is a little rougher than most. Maybe with some, he really treats them like they his boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever you want to call it. I don't know. But anywho, anywho. Back with Andrew. Um, back it with Andrew. Okay, now Andrew, we know, busted his wife Sarah, um, sleeping with Malcolm, who is actually Cynthia's husband. Cynthia also busted them sleeping together. But back at Andrew and his wife Cynthia's house, Sarah was back in bed with Malcolm, and I couldn't help but to wonder if they had literally jumped right back into the bed after Cynthia ran out of there. Sarah, you know, she did also happen to mention to Malcolm that she's still in love with Andrew. As you can expect, that did not sit too well with Malcolm. Malcolm is basically like done with his wife. I don't think there's no one go no going back. Was he put a gun on her? He was gonna shoot her, he was gonna kill her dead. And he the one who was bumping and grinding, cheating around on her. So I'm like, I guess he thought, you know. I'm doing all this for you. You still in love with this man? After he done left you, he done went to this cold. He ain't in contact with you. He ain't looking out for you. He done took all your money. He done gave it to the highest. And you still in love with him? Mm -hmm. But instead, Sarah told him that she needs time to think it over. She needs time to think things over. She needs time to figure out her next move. And so does Malcolm because his wife, Cynthia, is not going to... Who she's not gonna let that go easy. She's not gonna get him any breaks after learning about the affair. So he needs to prepare also for his next move. But back at the ranch, y'all, back at the ranch, aka the cult. The highest, he had a message for the peoples, y'all. He was looking high as hell. Did y'all see him? He was in that microphone. Like, I was like, <laughs> Is he about to start having some convulsion? You know he be high as hell all the time. <laughs> he had some flowers, some type of flowers in his hair, and he was up there. I don't know what the hell he was doing or something. Like he was trying to catch the Holy Spirit or something, but not really. <laughs> But anyway, he was giving them a message and um, also promised to stop anybody in their tracks that tries to get in the way of what they are about or what they are, what they got going on, trying to do, you know, on their compound, on their trailer park. And that includes every man, woman, and child in the cult laying down their lives for the sake of the cult. Now, if he wasn't giving me wino, crackhead, pimp juice, 
preacher tees. I don't know what it was. I was like, what the hell is wrong with him? What really are they taking? What really are the drugs that they are taking? I really need to know. I really need to know. But um, mother, she was really enjoying it. She was up there like, uh, I, I don't know what it is about mother. I really, I can't put my finger on it, y'all. But she was actually acting like it was MLK up there giving a let freedom ring speech all over again. That's how she was listening to that, that message. Like, <laughs> y'all, mother is a whole trip. She is a whole trip. But anyway, anyway, afterwards, Daikon joined River in the showers. Now, while Di while showering, Daikon asked River, was he in love with the highest? River did not right say he was in love with the highest. He didn't say he wasn't, but he said we all should love the highest. River didn't um say he was in love, but Mm, I think he is. I think he is. And he definitely loves the highest um, as far as his message, as far as he believes. He wholeheartedly believes in the message of the highest. Uh, River also warned Icon that some of the recent prison recruits, recruits are doubting how powerful the highest really is because of the fact that he sleeps with the males. So remember when I was asking, why the heck is River so persistent in trying to get the highest to sleep with one of the women, uh, mainly with Ruth? So now I guess this is the reason why he did express that there were rumors going around the highest and him only sleeping with men. But everybody knows that. So I was like, what's the big deal? But I guess with these new recruits that are from prison, I guess sleeping with all these men is making the highest to them look weak. I don't know. But uh, River suggested to Daikon that he have a talk with the men and hopefully make them see the light. So we shall see how that works. Um, as far as let's see, this is episode 19. So about five, about four or five episodes ago, y'all. Y'all remember Mother had recruited a snitch who she had assigned to find out if Ruth and Tally was being loyal to the cult or up to something. You know, after that incident where they came banging on the classroom door when mother was about to make all the kids drink the Kool-Aid, when the cult was um thought they was about to be uh thought they were about to be evade evaded or attacked by the locals so roof and tally they was up there they had their guns they was they was sniping up and everything sitting out in the cut you know ready to put a hole you know in mother and then they came and tear the door down so ever since then she's been you know kind of wondering like the ladies were they really telling the truth she knew they was but she had to be sure so she had that snitch um tell them she wanted to leave that she wanted to run away and tally and ruth straight away went and told daikon and the girl claimed that she had got beaten she told ruth and them that she had got beaten i really don't know if this lady can be trusted or not she came back to mother she told mother, yeah, 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 they're, they're, they're faithful. They loyal. They snitched on me right away. As soon as I told them that I wanted to escape, they snitched on me right away. So I don't think that they are trying to, you know, behind your back. But mother was like, is that so? Is that so? She made it seem like she believed it. But then after the snitch walked out the room, off the trailer, um, she really showed her true reactions. Now, being that Ruth and Tally had reported the snitch right away to Daikon for trying to escape, the snitch assumed Mother would be happy, but nope. Mother still thinks that something is going on. She still thinks that something is going on, on you know, with Ruth and Tally just because of the way they was banging on that classroom. And even the other lady, even the other elder was like, man, something just wasn't right. The way they, they was acting like they was police trying to kick that dough down when Mother was in there. So trying to prevent from giving the kids a Kool-Aid, Mother still wants to snitch to keep her eye on them and watch them while they're in the kitchen. She don't quite know what the ladies is up to, but she's aware that the ladies, if it was, if she don't know anything else, she knows that they were trying to stop her from killing 
the children. And she was like, what mother wouldn't want to have their children lay down their life and honor the highest? So she does know that something's going on. She just can't put her finger on it right now. But anyway, so or mother ordered the snitch to keep spying on them to gather some more intel. But this time, you know, she went and told the truth to Ruth and Tally that she was sent by mother to spy on them. The snitch now wants them to believe that she was doing all of this, you know, to find out if not only because mother told her to, but she also wanted to find out if they can be trusted because she said she really does want to leave. And then she mentioned the letter. Now, remember, Paula and Zane, they the ones who have the letter. And they had asked Ruth uh, to mail the letter to the congressman because one of the congressman's children, which is a daughter, is in the cult. And they think that if the congressman finds out that his daughter's in this cult, that he will send enforcement, you know, somebody, the cavalry, to come shut the whole cult down, rescue his uh, daughter and all that. This, that, and the third, right? Are they supposed to believe her now? Like, they, did she really write the letter? Now, she could have known about the letter. She could have known about the letter. Or... Is she actually the congressman's daughter? Y'all let me know because she claims she wrote the letter. So I, I don't know, child. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if I can fully believe her or not. Now I'm side eyeing Zane and I'm side eyeing Paula and all of them. So y'all let me know how y'all feel about that. Let me know if y'all think the snitch is actually the congressman's daughter or if you think that she is really on Ruth's side or if she's really against them. So let me know. Let me know. But as far as Ruth and Tally, um, on the morning, on their morning stroll, they ran across a man who's working on a bus. Them nor the mechanic knew for sure why the highest wants the bus up and running again. The mechanic, he was like, um, he probably wants to take the kids on a field trip somewhere. And I'm like, hell, the kids are already on a field trip living at that damn cult. They already on a field trip. I mean, the place they at right now is like no other place they've ever been before. <laughs> So I know they ain't going on no field trip. So what do y'all think are the real intentions of the highest to get those buses back running? <laughs> Let me know what y'all think about that. And finally, 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 Talilo, um, Oliver, Lacey. Please tell me what y'all think about this entire scene. When Lilo arrived back at the compound to see the highest, Oliver should have, if I was Oliver, I would have put a bullet right in his head while he was sitting there bumping his gum, sitting in the front of his car. And then I would have jumped in that car and drove him off into the sunset, like for real. He was popping off. He was talking shit, bumping his gum. Oliver sat right there and stood right there and let him humiliate him, degrade him, and not just him, but Lacey as well. I mean, Lilo was describing how he had passed the girl around Lacey has slept with like 15, 20 different men. Um, then he said that her JJ is probably all used up and shot out, pimped out now. I'm like, yeah, he should have. He, he was holding that gun, gritting his teeth. You know, he wanted to pop he wanted to pop off on that Lilo, but he didn't. And then Lilo started insinuating that he had Lacey in the trunk of his car. Is Lacey in that trunk, y'all? Please say it ain't so. Please say it ain't so. Y'all definitely let me know how y'all feel about that scene. The last scene of the show. And on that note, y'all, make sure again you like the video, share the video, subscribe to the hood table if you're not already subscribed. Make sure you also hit us up on Facebook, IG, Twitter, um, stereo, and also the hood table. Um, and if you have the uh, notification bell hit also on our YouTube channel, then you'll get all of our notifications when we go live. And again, one more time, I will be live tonight at eight o'clock for my birthday. I'm about to get off of here, I'm about to go grab me something to eat, grab me something to drink, and grab me a few decorations, you know, just to have a, you know, for the camera. I'm not really doing anything big because of the Rona, because of CBD-19. Um, I'm not about to have all kinds of people in my house. I'm not about to go out anywhere. It's, you know, I take social distancing seriously. If you don't know me personally, you better ask somebody. They be like, Tanya, you want to go here, 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 there, there, there? Nope. I even watch my church services on Facebook. So I take my uh, social distancing serious and I work from home. So on that note, eight o'clock, have nothing to do tonight. Please come back. Show your girl some love for her birthday. And also, so again, if you feel you know, giving a girl a little gift,
from something for her birthday right there at the bottom on the hood table for thank you eight you guys i love all you guys thanks for tuning in and in the meantime in between time stay safe be blessed always 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 y'all remain vigilant y'all remain vigilant y'all keep the hood and i